I'm absolutely convinced we can cure metastatic patients. So first of all, there's a group of patients who was cured also 10 years ago, and this was roughly 10% of patients who had simply fable prognostic signs, which was solitary lung metastasis, for instance, you know, and this was removed and the patients never relapsed. So there was a small proportion of patients. The question is, what can systemic drugs do here? And, you know, we have five-year survival data from the PD-1 antibodies, and, you know, the five-year survival looks very promising because those who had a previous treatment and those who had no previous treatment, if they are mixing up, it's 34% five-year survival. And for the treatment-naive patients, it's 41 after PD-1 antibody alone. And there's even more promising data for the combo of ipilimumab and nivolumab. So I would say, yes, there is a likelihood very high that one-third of the patients are already cured in our days. So there's uh, patients with favorable prognostic factors like uh, stage, which is very important. M1A means that uh, distant lymph node or skin metastasis. M1B is a patient with just lung metastasis. Now, as before, this is the best of the best patients. So if we give new drugs to them, and particularly they have a complete response, they are very likely to be cured. So that is patients who might not receive the drug forever, so we can stop one day and uh, discontinue and the patients still have an ongoing complete response. And how big is it? Yes, absolutely. So there is a gap in between patients with progression-free survival and those who survive. And the gap is anywhere in between 13 to 20 percent. And this is patients who still survive, although they had a progressive disease, so they are benefiting from any other salvage therapy, which is second and third line treatment. So, for instance, you start with targeted therapies like BRAF and MEK inhibitors. Patients become progressive and you give them some sort of immuno-oncology drugs, uh, PD-1 antibody or ipilimumab and nivolumab. They have another success. So in the long run, they are doing well, but in the short run, they were not counted as initial uh, responders. That's a very good question. So, you know, we, so far we're trusting, you know, a radiological evaluation, so imaging with CT and MRI scans or PET scans, you know. And uh, you are right, I believe we need to have some biomarkers which are easy uh, to use. And circulating tumor DNA is one of the hottest topics in our day. But, you know, so far it looks like only patients can be detected with some sorts of circulating tumor DNA from specific uh, mutations, like BRAF mutations, if they have a high tumor load. So those who have a rapidly progressive disease, it's easy to detect. But those with just a tiny progressive disease are not so easy to detect. So the question is on sensitivity and specificity, how good are these new markers? And they are not a routine yet. Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, we have made so much progress. And, you know, in the last eight years, the survival went up from 10% five-year survival to 40%. And now I believe it's slowing down, you know. It's very unlikely that there's any breakthrough like immune checkpoint inhibition, you know, which brings the same magnitude of a benefit coming from chemo to immune checkpoint inhibition was like, you know, blowing everything away, which we have seen. And it was leading, as you know, to the Nobel Prize. And, you know, and something like this to, to see again and bring another 30 to 40 percent improvement in overall survival, I believe it's unlikely. Yeah, it could be the neo event or the Advent setting which is making the difference. But still, I mean, this is patients, you know, who have a good chance to survive without any further treatment. So, you know, in all of the clinical trials, you know, the worst case is a 70% risk of progressive disease. And the best case for stage 3A with just a tiny lymph node metastasis, you know, it's not more than 20% risk to relapse. So we have one risk to take into account in the future. And this is over-treatment of potentially cured patients and bringing harm to these patients. So we have a number of physicians who are, you know, interested in just cure. And I believe it's difficult to talk about this, the C word because you have always arguments against it. But I believe, you know, we have patients who are cured. I, 
uh, was knowing these patients by name in the past because it was so, uh, just so few, but now I don't know them by name, and this is a good sign because it's very many. Thank <music> you.